Yo, what's up guys, welcome back to another video. This is another Lamino reaction and I'm just happy to be getting back onto the Lamino videos. I'm planning over the next probably, well the next few weeks, next month or two, to just sort of be getting through go or going through a lot more of his videos because again, I really enjoy them and it's just something that I'm gaining more of an interest in the more I sort of see his videos. I like sort of conspiracy type videos, I like conspiracies in general, I find them quite fun to learn about and who else but him to sort of put his video editing skills and sort of storytelling skills in one it just makes for such an interesting watch and again you all seem to be really enjoying these reactions so I'm going to keep doing them for as long as you enjoy these videos and for as long as I can see more of his posts because he's not posts uh, he's not posted the, uh, he's not posted the video for like months now but when he does it's it's a banger of a video and I just enjoy seeing his channel man but this one is the great silence the fun thing about his videos is quite a long quite a lot of the time you don't actually know the subject until you actually get into the video which is always quite fun to sort of not know what it's going to be about until you actually see it but yeah i'm interested let's just get into this quick um link to my second channel and my instagram and twitter in the description for those interested if you want to follow links are there and on my youtube we're closing in closing in on like 15k which is crazy but yeah for those interested that's there but let's get into this one let's, let's see what let's see, just see what he has for us today man just let me know. What's the audio saying? What's this noise? In 1967, a postgraduate student at Cambridge University by the name of Jocelyn Burnell was surveying the sky with a newly constructed radio telescope. After a few weeks, she discovered something odd. The telescope had picked up a radio signal that seemed to be pulsating. The pulses had an interval of exactly 1.33 seconds and were initially thought to be nothing more than man-made interference. What the fuck? However, it soon became clear the signal did in fact emanate from deep space. What? Okay, this is already intriguing. This is already like grabbing me in, man, but every like 1 minute 33 and the That's unwavering so precision of the pulses was unlike anything seen before as such many questioned whether it was a naturally occurring phenomenon or a transmission from another civilization the radio source was even named lgm1 an acronym for little green men and burnell herself could not help but wonder if she'd man. actually discovered the first sign of life beyond the earth there's such a weird noise as well. What the fuck? As you might expect, it didn't take long for natural explanations to emerge, and we now know these pulsating signals to be produced by rapidly rotating neutron stars, known as pulsars, that okay. emit beams of radiation akin to the beams of light emitted by a lighthouse. If nothing else, it made for a neat album cover. Ever since, an international effort known as the Search for Extraterrestrial cool, Intelligence has actively been listening for artificial transmissions, but so far we appear to be the only ones broadcasting into the void. Humanity has been leaking radio signals into space for the better part of a century, so any eavesdropping aliens within about a hundred light years could potentially be alerted to us. So they want, they want aliens to be able to find us. I mean, that's interesting. I, I didn't really know about this stuff, and I don't really know much when it comes to like, aliens and sort of us looking for other life in space, but it's interesting to me that they're actively looking to, like, attract aliens or other species, whatever you want to say, to try and be able to find us. Beyond this invisible radio bubble enveloping some 15,000 stars, the Earth is just another silent speck. Not only that, but as technology improves, this radio leakage is dramatically reduced before long Earth may return to a state of radio silence. If most civilizations improve and eventually outgrow radio technology at a similar pace, the radio signature of any one civilization may only be detectable for a very brief period of time. Furthermore, this radio leakage is extremely faint and only grows more and more diffused as it expands into the galaxy. Mm. Some of the most powerful signals to leak into space are military radar emissions and stand a much better chance of detection across interstellar distances than the average television broadcast. 
The Square Kilometer Array, a vast interferometer to be constructed in South Africa and Australia, could be sensitive enough to detect the faint radio signature of an Earth-like civilization out to a distance of several hundred light years. To detect more- Bro, human technology is just stupid, man. How do we even manage to do this? I know this isn't what the video is even about, but like, it just makes you realize how crazy technology really or is, distant man. signals would require more deliberate attempts at it's communication. To me. For instance, an advanced civilization may construct powerful beacons specifically to increase their radio luminosity. These beacons would be rather expensive to maintain as they would consume vast amounts of energy for extended periods of time. A less expensive alternative would be a focused beam of radiation as opposed to an omnidirectional broadcast. In 1974, the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico famously beamed an interstellar message towards a globular cluster some 25,000 light years distant. The message took less than three minutes to transmit, so any prospecting aliens in the path of that signal would have less than three minutes to detect it, and they will never get a second chance. We may have been on the receiving end of such an interstellar message when in 1977, a momentary burst of energy swept across the planet. Repeated attempts at redetection notwithstanding, the famous WOW signal was never detected again, and its origin has never been conclusively ascertained. On the slim chance that it was of artificial origin, a reply was beamed in a general direction whence it came in 2012. What the fuck? This type of stuff makes my head go, man. <laughs> It really does. In a galaxy as old and vast as the Milky Way, the probability of two civilizations stumbling upon one another by briefly screaming in random directions is not great. To increase our chances, we need to limit our selection of targets by searching for other technological and biological signatures. In 1995, the first extrasolar planet orbiting a sun-like star was discovered. We now know that the vast majority of the hundreds of billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy are home to at least one planet. We also know that billions of those planets are of similar size to the Earth and orbit within the habitable zone of a star similar to the Sun. This means that liquid water could exist on the surface, which is an essential ingredient for life as we know it. Furthermore, billions of extrasolar moons may also be capable of supporting life. With this knowledge in mind, in 2017, a message was beamed towards one of the least distant and most Earth-like exoplanets discovered to date. The message comprised a number of musical compositions and basic information about humankind, and should the planet be inhabited, we could expect a reply as early as 2044. Here's a quick preview of that future. However, habitability is no- Wait, what? Wait, what was that? This is just- these types of videos are just they're so eye-opening to just how crazy the world actually is. As early as 2044, here's a quick preview of that future. Breaking news, humanity ghosted by nearby ex ex exoplanet. Ashiona is puzzled by lack of response from alien world, Earth on the brink of total collapse, or is it? However, habitability is no guarantee of habitation. To determine whether a potentially life-supporting planet is currently supporting life would require a more careful examination. For instance, by analyzing the starlight passing through the atmosphere of an exoplanet, it is possible to deduce its chemical composition. The spectrum of an oxygen-rich atmosphere will differ from that of, say, a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. Given that photosynthetic plants and organisms are responsible for the large quantities of oxygen on Earth, an exoplanetary atmosphere with a similar concentration of oxygen could be taken as a sign of life. This is known as a biosignature, but it's far from definitive as oxygen could also be the result of various abiogenic processes. As such, astrobiologists are more interested in certain chemical combinations as it would be far less likely for, say, methane and carbon dioxide to coexist in the absence I know this is irrelevant and this is probably just a stupid question, but I just find it crazy how they can even find out these sort of this these bits of information about planets so far away. Like how do they like how can they find this stuff out? I just don't get it. And I know like there's probably every, well there is explanations to it and there is obviously well it's a science the science behind it is obviously correct, but I just I can never get my head around how they can even possibly do this for things so far away and they can tell whether it's got a certain amount of oxygen and just all these different things. And it's just, I don't know, this is irrelevant to the re video really, but I just always have found it crazy how scientists can do this sort of stuff. Of life. 
Speaking of carbon dioxide, some chemicals can be indicative of industrial pollution, and thus artificially induced climate change could serve as the universal sign of unintelligent life. In addition to biosignatures, we may be able to detect signs of technology. For instance, an exoplanet surrounded by a dense orbital belt of artificial satellites or space debris could be detected during transit of its parent star. This would be an example of a techno-signature. A more extreme example would be a megastructure. A megastructure? What? I love Initial you, speculation so much, surrounding the discovery of pulsars has become somewhat of a recurring theme. Whenever an astronomical discovery initially defies explanation, vigorous speculation about aliens takes center stage. In more recent years, this discussion has been dominated by a peculiar star some 1500 light years distant. The star exhibits erratic light fluctuations and occasionally dim by as much as 22%, and so one hypothesis is that an alien megastructure is blocking the light from the star. While evidence of astroengineering is still within the realm of possibility, the dimming is now thought to be caused by nothing more than dust. The existence of circumstellar megastructures was popularized by theoretical physicist Freeman Dyson back in 1960 as a potential means for advanced civilizations to hold like a disco in space. the energy of their parent star, <laughs> commonly known as the Dyson Sphere or Dyson Swarm. According to the Kardashev scale, a method of measuring a civilization's energy consumption proposed by astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev in 1964, a Dyson Sphere would be indicative of a Type II civilization. A Type 1 civilization could harness the energy of its home planet. A Type 2 civilization could oh, harness I'm, the I'm energy of its parent star. A oh, Type 3 star, civilization yeah. could harness the total energy output of an entire galaxy. What? Extensive <laughs> surveys of billions of stars notwithstanding, there is no reliable evidence of a Type 2 nor Type 3 civilization mm. in the Milky Way galaxy. So far. What about extragalactic life? After surveying 100,000 nearby galaxies for signs of a Type 3 super civilization, astronomers found no signs of a galactic empire. Which isn't a surprise. <laughs> The great silence of the universe can be a bit unnerving. <laughs> Humanity is now on the verge of detecting biosignatures <coughs> of extrasolar planets, but Earth has been radiating detectable biosignatures for billions of years. Yet, as far as we can tell, it's failed to attract the attention of any alien astronomers. The apparent contradiction between the expectation and lack of evidence for extraterrestrial life is known as the Fermi Paradox. Given the sheer size and age of the universe, why does it appear to be so lifeless? It is possible to concoct a myriad of hypothetical solutions. Perhaps life is common, while intelligent life is exceedingly rare. After all, it took some 4 billion years of evolution and a number of mass extinctions before humans emerged on Earth. Mm. Proponents of the rare Earth hypothesis suggest that complex life on Earth is the result of an improbable chain of events unlikely to occur more than once. Perhaps there exists a barrier, either improbable or impossible, for life to overcome. If the barrier is behind us, we may be among the fortunate few to have crossed it. Potential candidates include the emergence of multicellular organisms and the invention of nuclear weapons. See, when you get into this stuff, it just... <laughs> It's, it's weird how refreshing but also scary these kinds of topics are because when you get to this sort of stuff you just sort of realize how just more lucky we are how irrelevant we are how small we are how lonely we are because like you see the whole the size of space and there's just one little sort of planet that's just got all this life and then the rest of the space just has nothing possibly and it's just like it just makes you realize like just firstly why we why we're at war i mean that's just getting deep but like why humans are so sort of hostile towards each other but secondly just like just it's just like i don't even know it just it just burns my head and it just spins me i'm just like what the fuck it's just wild how like crazy just the well, this video is but just how crazy these topics are and they just they just make my head go man really they really Weapons. really do if the barrier is still to come, we may soon join the cosmological graveyard of fallen civilizations. 
Potential candidates include unsustainable climate change and the invention of nuclear weapons. Perhaps we severely well. underestimate how truly alien aliens can be. All mm. life on Earth is carbon-based and rely on water, but life could hypothetically be silicon-based and thrive in oceans of liquid ammonia. Just as we search for life as That's we know it, point, aliens may be doing the same. Perhaps an advanced civilization did in fact pay us a visit in the distant past, unless some sort of evidence of that visitation survived for millions or billions of years, we'd never know. Hmm. Even a visitation in the recent past could have been misconstrued as gods descending from the heavens. Well, I mean, that would have been a fairly accurate interpretation. Perhaps all civilizations inevitably develop technology that transcend physical reality. For instance, reality could be rendered obsolete by hyper-realistic simulations. By transferring one's consciousness into these virtual wonderlands, one could achieve digital immortality. The happenstance offerings of nature would struggle to compete with the promise of utopia. Throughout the galaxy, pockets of advanced civilizations may occupy no more than a few star systems as they explore inner space in place of outer space. In his Transcension Hypothesis, futurist John Smart takes it a step further and supposes this introverted evolution will progressively miniaturize computers until they are so intensely compressed that they generate an environment analogous to black holes. These post-biological civilizations would thus transcend the space-time continuum and vanish from the visible universe. Hypothetically speaking. <sighs> Apart from artificial transmissions and distant signs of astro-engineering, there's also a far less remote form of techno-signature. The Voyager spacecraft was launched in 1977, and as of the making of this video, it is the only probe to have reached interstellar space. It famously carries a golden record with information about mankind, but it will take another 40,000 years before the probe encounters another star. Jesus. In an effort to more expeditiously explore the galaxy, an advanced civilization may launch sophisticated interstellar probes capable of self-replication. These probes would be intelligent enough to mine the available resources in any given planetary system to create copies of themselves. These copies would then travel to neighboring systems and create additional copies. If this these probes could travel at just 10% the speed of light, a speed attainable by modern methods of propulsion, every corner of the galaxy could be exhaustively explored in just a few million years. Gee, a relatively short... Just, just a few million years. I know what he's meaning there, because like, in terms of space, that's nothing, but in terms of humans... That's ridiculous. Like, you can't even comprehend how long that actually is. ...amount of time on cosmological timescales. Mankind is now fast approaching the <laughs> technological sophistication years. to launch such a probe. This begs the question, why is the solar system so probeless? If human progress is any indication, the galaxy should be completely overrun by self-replicating automata, yet we see no evidence of that. Good An ongoing point. hunt for alien artifacts has yet to locate any covert probes lurking in the solar system. But space is vast. An object of extrasolar origin could easily be zipping around our cosmic backyard without our knowledge. In fact, that is exactly what happened in 2017. Yeah. An extrasolar object named Oumuamua passed through the inner solar system and went completely unnoticed until it was moving away from the sun. Even then, its discovery was pure luck and thousands of extrasolar visitors could go undetected each year. The size and shape of a muamua can only be inferred by the amount of light it reflects, but it appears to be highly elongated or extremely flat. Initially, it was thought to be a comet, but the absence of a cometary coma, a trailing cloud of dust and gas typically formed when comets approach the sun, lent credence to it being an asteroid. But then the object began to accelerate, this acceleration would be consistent with the outgassing of a comet, but as mentioned, Oumuamua does not display the expected characteristics of a comet. One possibility is that this outgassing is simply too faint for us to detect, but there is that remote possibility of it being an interstellar probe. More specifically, a probe using a light sail as a means of propulsion. On the other hand, Oumuamua is perfectly radio silent. Perhaps it's a defunct probe, destined to aimlessly roam the galaxy. 
much like Voyager. <laughs> It's important to remember that with a sample size of one, that being Earth, we cannot possibly know how common or rare life truly is. There could be hundreds of planets or millions of galaxies between us and them. Yeah. If life was discovered elsewhere in the solar system, perhaps beneath the frozen mantle of Europa, we'd be able to compare and contrast two distinct sources of life and gain crucial insight into its commonality or rarity. Many reject the anthropocentric view of Earth as a cosmological oddity due to the sheer number of Earth-like planets coupled with the resilience of life on Earth. But the truth is, we don't know. We don't know if billions of planets is sufficient for intelligence to arise more than once. We don't know the prerequisites for abiogenesis, the transition from non-life to life. We don't know the probability of cosmic solitude. But to conclude that we are alone in the face of all this ignorance is more than a bit presumptuous. The extent of our search for extraterrestrial intelligence has been compared to searching a glass of water for evidence of fish in all of Earth's oceans. <laughs> Space is unimaginably vast <laughs> and we have barely energy. begun to scratch the surface. There are so many like untapped avenues for detecting signs of life that if we just turned that telescope a bit to the left, made it a bit larger and listened to a slightly different range of frequencies, Perhaps the universe wouldn't be so silent. Mate, this is an absolutely incredible video. Shout out Lumino again, man. His videos are so good. They're so good. I'm actually surprised he doesn't get sponsors because his videos are just incredible. Maybe he does now, but he just deserves all the sponsors in the world, man, because these videos are so good. I can't get my head around how just... They just make you think how these videos just make you think about certain things that you probably wouldn't beforehand. It's just, it's refreshing but also scary at the same time. I said that already, but it is. Lumino uploads and you drop everything to watch. Imagine during those three minutes some alien was was off taking a piss and missed the signal. <laughs> Imagine getting a transmission from space only to decode it as the Universal S. I actually want to check that one out, the Universal S, because I know what it is and it's something that I used to always do. And I always see it pop up and it's just one that I do want to see, but there's a lot of videos of his that I've got to get through, man. The fact I'm going to die before we get to truly explore the deep space is honestly depressing. Artificial climate change can be the universal sign for unintellig unintelligent life. I love it. There are not enough channels like this on YouTube, so make sure to give them a lot of love. Phenomenal. Thank you for scaring me. Seriously, though, seriously, I really hope we find something before I die. I swear, if we get a message back from alternate... Uh, from alternate civilization saying be quiet you're in trouble i will forever be shitting my pants out of shit fit <laughs> based on the title i thought this video was going to be about my group chat when i say hi to everybody i love youtube comments so much it's so stupid i'm related but for april fools it would be pretty fun funny if we would make a top 10 memes for old time's sake i mean i don't know if you did it but i love this video man i don't know how i've just found this channel I don't know how it actually annoys me. This video is two years old and I just don't know how I never found this channel before because I literally love this sort of stuff. I love this style of content. It's just so interesting to me, but I mean, yeah. Shout out to him, man, because I'm going to be doing a lot more reactions to his channel in the coming days, in the coming weeks and in the coming months. I don't know how many videos he has, does it say? Can you find out how many videos? I mean, he has a lot, to be fair. He has a lot. Is this him? Oh, shit, that's him. But yeah, man, I love this channel. I really, really do. But yeah, for you guys who watch this reaction, thank you guys. Suggest what ones you'd like to see next because I love these kinds of videos. And tell me what you think about this because this sort of stuff just blows my mind, man. It really does. It just makes you think about things that you just, you would never think about if it wasn't for these types of videos. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.